A manufacturer shipped 57 cameras to an electronics store. Two of these are defective. If the store sold 20 cameras before discovering that some are defective, what is the probability that at least one defective camera was sold? First thing I would say is that I would look at the 57 camera inventory and partition it into two pieces. There are the cameras that are good that are not defective. I'll call them G for good. And there are 55 of those. But there are two defectives. So of the 57 cameras in the inventory, we can partition that into the 55 goods and the two defectives. The problem wants to know the probability that at least one is defective. So what we're, we're attempting to calculate is the probability of at least one defective. Now, as we know from the complement rule, the probability of at least one of something happening is one minus the probability that none. So here it would be the probability that none are defective. So the probability that at least one defective by the complement rule is one minus the probability that none are defective. So how, how would you calculate the probability that none are defective? Well, first of all, you sold 20. So it's like be the same thing as drawing 20 cards out of a deck of cards. And you've got 57 cameras, so it would be like a 57 deck car, uh, card deck, and you're drawing 20 out. It's analogous to the card problem. And we know order doesn't matter. You don't care what order the, the, the uh, cameras are drawn from. And you've seen this problem, at least in some form or the other, many times. So these are combinations. Order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> you just want to know if there are two defectives. You could care less about the order. Or in this case, that none are defective. Excuse me. So we're drawing 20. You've sold 20 cameras. So that's like drawing 20 cameras out of a deck of 57 cameras, if you want to think of it that way. Up top, you want to know the probability that none are defective. Oh, and this is 1 minus, by the way. Half the battle is being careful. It's 1 minus. One minus that. But up top, you're, you're looking, you're trying to get no defectives. So you've got to draw them from the 55 good ones. Down bottom, it doesn't matter if they're defective or not, so you're drawing them from the 57 total. So when you're looking for no defectives, they've got to come from the 55 good ones. When you are calculating the number of ways of drawing any 20 out, then you go from the 57. And we've done this. This is the same as a card problem we've done before. So continue the calculation. One minus. Now this calculation of the combination divided by the combination, we know we can do it on the calculator all in one series of keystrokes. So I'm going to do that now. We would want to put in 55. Now the combination is Shift 2 on your Casio FX260. So then you do Shift 2. That gives you the combination. Then 20. Then you want to divide that by 57, and then another combination, so it would be shift 2 again, and then 20, and then to get the calculation cal uh, evaluated, you hit equal. And when you do that, you end up with 
um, to the nearest three decimal places. I didn't write that in the beginning of the problem, but they're asking for the answer to the nearest, uh, to accurate to three decimal places. So this whole, ca this little part right here is done by this calculation. And 1 minus 0 0.417 is 0 0.583. So to three decimal places, the probability that you get at least one defective is 0.583. Remember, the easiest way to do this is to think of it as a, at least one is going to be one minus none. And then calculate the none using our combinations, and then one minus, and you've got it. They gave you a hint, but you didn't really need it. They gave you the hint but you didn't really need it. I worked it without even taking advantage of their hint, but they were telling you in that hint, they were telling you what the uh, fraction was going to be over here. So if you had actually used their hint, you could have seen that this value here is what they're telling you to put here. I didn't even use it. And I hope you could do the problem without using that hint yourself. But it is there if you if you wanted a little prompting. That hint was telling you part of what you need to do.